more established maybe even then as the, as the England guy. He was the, the star young fast kid. But Ryan Hall was playing on the side that he's not normally known for playing on um, and still managed to score two absolute freak finishes. And that was when the corner flag still was in play. Yes. And they were absolutely phenomenal. And, and that was the day that I, I, I thought Ryan Hall went from being a very, very good winger who'd already had a lot of accolades to being the world's best winger that yes. he was his i know he'd won best winger in the world i think or international winger of the world like the year or year year before or something but that moment for me was this is the i'm watching the best winger in the world right now playing yeah 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 th- th- those finishes were th- they were his you know um c- confirmed his quality without question and I think the comparison then it draws for me is when Makinson against New Zealand in that series played on the left wing when we've always seen him playing on the right for St. Helens and was able to do something similar and get the golden boot. <laughs> um, so base, effectively, he was the best wing in the world at that point in, internationally. And sometimes when you see things like that with players, you just have to sort of sit back and take your club uh, club colours off and just absolutely admire what you've got there. And that, that was a moment for me with Ryan Hall, that game at Wembley. Yeah. Uh, so Tom Eckley says uh, another name we've had before so from a Warrington perspective it has to be Joel Monaghan uh, sometimes overlooked for not being the fastest uh, Pat Richards seems to be the only one who could ever compete with him in the air never forget 2014 feel like he's the only ever season top try scorer not to make the dream team oh, you, you need to ask somebody who's got who's got all the statistics to, to I don't check even that remember one. it being that controversial though so let's have a look it was in <laughs> The 2014 Super League Dream Dream. Uh, it was probably Ryan Hall and some, and probably maybe Ryan and Jerry actually. It would have been maybe. Um, there's a there's a chance it would have been Charlie yeah. as well. Why, why are we talking around it when I'll just when uh, you can just when you can just look can just look it up. Um, it's Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall's one of them. Tommy Makinson. Made oh, his was it? Appearance. Blimey, that's quite early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was very good, though, from an early stage, Tommy Makinson. I, re- I remember him um, playing a bit at fullback in his early career in, in Derby games. He kept seemed to have inter- he kept seemed to have injury crises at fullback in Easter Derby games for about three years on a row, um, and he, he was good in those. But yeah, that was his first appearance for Makinson. So yeah, I don't know if Monaghan go. actually got a dream team. Oh, he did in 2011. He was in the Super League dream team. There was a period though in the mid sort of teens where it seemed to be if you were from a different nation you weren't going to get in the dream team I mean in 13 Danny Bruff was the only non-English player but he's English and uh, 14 there was no non-English players <laughs> so there you go um, and 15 only two so it, it was maybe maybe he was undone a little bit by that uh, Simon Lees at Milford Tiger said Singe at Cass. I'm sure Fat Boy Rob will share lots of happy memories. I don't know who Singe is. St. John Ellis. Ah, mm, St. John Ellis. St. John Ellis, yes. Okay. Oh, of course, whose try scoring record the next person is going to mention broke. Yes. So, so we went on to say, also love to hear views about the snake, Denny Solomona. Personal view, top quality winger. Real shame how he manoeuvred his way, uh, uh, his move away from Cass. So... You two must remember um, St. John Ellis better than me, than uh, Sarah. I more remember the name than the player. Fair enough. Because it was, you know, when you're younger, it's a funny name, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I have brief memories of him because he he had a year with us um, after a spell at Doncaster. Um, Yeah. um, to answer the Dennis Solomona question, for me, good player in a great system. Yeah. Um, you, you, you can plug any. You could plug any winger in that, and he'd get twenty-five tries. So yeah, like like yeah, there was Carney before him, wasn't there? And he he was devastating. And then Solomon yeah, and Greg Eden came in after, and he he did the same. It's uh, it, yeah, anybody next to Shenton basically. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whether it was. Whether it was Dawn or Hardacre at fullback, Gale and Shenton worked together so well with whoever the fullback was down that side that it, it just created so much. The system that Powell, um, 
and Sheridan and Aura created as well just created so much opportunities, didn't it? Like you say, it didn't really... There was the odd time, wasn't there, where he finished something and it looked a bit spectacular, but it felt like half of his tries were a walk-in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, good play. Chris. And, you know, that, I was, sorry, I was going to say, you know, and that is a sign of a good team, isn't it? That, you know, every try that the winger scores looks like a walk-in. Yeah, yes. and I suppose if we're saying that about Denny Solomon, do we sort of say that a little bit about Martin Afire, <laughs> given how many simple tries he'd have scored for, um, for Witness and, w- and Wigan in that era? But then, I don't know if... I don't know, because the, the other thing about Danny Solomona is he only did it once. Yes. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 when he was at London before he went to... Um, before he went to Castleford, when London went down, I think it was, he didn't look amazing. He, he looked like he had some talent, but he didn't look amazing. But then, and at Cass as well, he didn't really get a break until the back end of that season, really. Uh, the, the 2015 season, where he scored a few hat tricks and then became the the main man for the for the next season but he didn't get a chance in the NRL and he went to a sport where does he, I, I don't know how many tries he scores at, at rugby union but it's not really as much about scoring tries is it no 41 tries in 68 games it's not the same sort of level of record is it and only one try in five games for England I, I, he was a, fla- a flash in the pan in a great system, but it was a yeah. great year. It was a great year. I think with um, people like him, it, the, the proof of the pudding is always going to be what they do subsequently, but obviously we can't properly test that because he didn't hang around. Yeah, good point. Yeah, he went, didn't he, st- like, straight away after that great year. Yeah. Whereas Martin Afire obviously did it for... Many years. He scored nine tries in one game once. The ten. Ten, ten against Leeds. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> see, see, he's my, not Danny Solomon of, uh, of Wigan. <laughs> see, see, see my, obviously, I've, I've got all the um, the usual memories of a fire, you know, the Wembley final oh, in the oh, sun oh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for me, the big my one of my abiding memories of of a fire was when he was playing at Salford. Um, and it's still the biggest defeat in Super League. It was 96-16 when Bradford beat them. But he, he didn't stop trying that day. He absolutely worked his guts out, even though he, he was in a well-beaten side. And I kind of had a lot more respect for him after that. And in by terms that stage, of, he was 35 years old. His speed wasn't as, as wasn't yeah. what it was, you know, 10 years earlier. Absolutely not. But he, he he kept you know you know if you get him fl- let him flogged like that you can understand why he might hide on the wing. But he never did, and he he, he kept going, and I had a massive amount of respect for that. So, but yeah, I mean you know I, th- I think we you know everyone's mentioned him a lot. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna he's gonna an come icon up again, isn't he? In the yes. next one, Sarah, do you want to tell us what Barney had to say? Yes. So Barney at Batten Hall Blue said, "My first and favourite winger was Henderson Gill." scored one of the best tries ever saw away at Odsall in the third round of the cup that saw us narrowly win 7-6 and led to the great 1985 final against Hull opposition wingers at the time Des Drummond was a man to be feared Martin Afire for both witness then Wigan was the best natural try scorer and winger I saw he was tougher than he ever got credit for as was always targeted for perceived defensive weaknesses but in Super League era Keith Senior and Mark Calderwood are up there from history, all fat Wigan fans revere Billy Boston, someone I was fortunate enough to meet, but not old enough to see play. But the record books show Wigan, what, sorry, Warrington winger Brian Bevan was possibly the best of all time and the best ever Aussie import. Yeah, he's a player that's kind of got into the Aussie Hall of Fame as much for his career over here as his career down there, because he was he was that good over here was Brian Bevan. With his, I mean. He still holds the record, doesn't he, for most tries scored? He does. By, by a long way, I think. Yeah. Yes, it was six, yeah. six million or something, something <laughs> yeah. along those kind of lines, yeah. The, he and he looked it, about 100, didn't he? Like, when he, even when he was in his pomp, he, he, he's a really <laughs> old looking guy. Oh, God, yeah. He was. <laughs> he, 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 it's kind of the. Um, 
uh, the Bobby Charlton type thing where yeah. even in his peak in his late 20s he had like a comb over and when you're a flying <laughs> winger and all your hair's just pulling away like a mad scientist kind of bald thing with all these tufts of hair at the side but whizzing past people and scoring so many tries yeah there was the, the, there were no weaving um, going on um, certainly not on the head anyway no um just just before we move on, just just a brief word about Henderson Gill. Yes, I was going to um, say, cause he, he was a, to me, Henderson Gill, from everything I've seen, was a scorer of spectacular tries. Rather than a great try scorer, he scored great tries, I always thought of feel. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the reason I'm bringing it up is, is, is iconic, iconic moment, you know, and he does a bit of a boogie in the corner type stuff. Eight, was it 85 down under? Is it 85? I can't remember. Anyway... It, it, again, that's an iconic moment, isn't it? It's an, and that was a brilliant try, you know, as you say, a scorer of brilliant tries. Um, and yeah, and you know, you, you you track that kind of level of, it's a level of fame purely based on a on an individual moment like that. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us into the next one then? Yeah. So Phil White says, uh, Martin Afai, again, the best I've ever seen. Uh, thought he was brilliant with Witness and I was over the moon when he signed for Wigan. Uh, made tra- scoring tries look effortless. Pairing up with Vinacolo or Jason Robinson for a dream pair. My God, imagine getting that under the salary cap. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we had a fire paired with Robinson for a couple of years when there was no salary cap, and then, then a fire went off to London, didn't he? <laughs> uh, Tom Regan, at Tom K. Regan, says, Best I've seen at Wigan are Robinson, created tries out of nothing, and Richards, he just seems to do everything well. So Tom must be a similar age to me. <laughs> He's a, a Especially versus Hull winking. Uh, Oz seemed to have full backs and centres at wing, but Brett Morris stands out as a, as a winger. Always liked Ryan Hall. Some great finishes for England. Hashtag fingertips, hashtag robbed. Yes, he was in that throwback jersey test. He, that try was a try, wasn't it? Definitely a try. Definitely a try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, um... First taste of England disappointment. Uh, oh, no, uh, second taste of England disappointment of uh, being a rugby league fan. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's plenty more to come, you know. <laughs> so what did our good friend Paul O'Brien have to say? Paul O'Brien said, for witness, Martin Afire, John Devereux, and the best ever seen. Oh, no, John Devereux was the best ever seen, and Stuart Wright. Stuart um, Wright just sounds like a guy in the office, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, righty from accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of him. Sorry, I apologise. <laughs> Uh, obviously, John Devereux was a um, Welsh oh, Union right import, wasn't Wigan. he? <laughs> he scored 100 <laughs> tries for Wigan, then 150 <laughs> tries for Witness. <laughs> nah, before your time, though. Way before my time. <laughs> Way before my time, unfortunately. Sorry, mm. go on. You were saying that. No, I'm just saying that uh, John Devereux, was, uh, from my memory, he was one of the Welsh imports, wasn't he, in the uh, late 80s when Witness had, obviously had their great side. So... You know, he he was a great player, and again in a great side, kind of. That, that's going to contribute to your to your memories of a player, isn't it? Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, Mike Webster got in touch as well. He he's uh, obviously our friend who was on the show a few weeks ago. He wants to remind people that offload is still running Tuesdays via Skype. Um, so li- li- there'll be links in the episode blog post to where you can get more information on that as well off their social media pages and stuff like that. But the offload program. Still running on Tuesday evenings. Uh, sorry, via Zoom, not Skype. We do it via Skype. Anyway, on the wingers, he said, the best winger he's ever seen, probably a fire, because he was just as good at, Wig- at witness as he was at Wigan, in brackets, unfortunately, as a Saints fan. Favourite Saints winger, probably Alan Hunt, shades it over Tommy Makinson. Great finisher and a very tough player for a winger. His dream pairing, though, Van Vollenhoven and Boston would have been good to watch. Um, let's start off bigger talk than there with the sort of holy trinity of wingers as it were because everyone who gets into our sport will at some point in the early stages of getting into our sport hear about Billy Boston Van Vollenhoven and Brian Bevan it's just inevitable (laughs) because they are three of the greatest try scorers ever who not only scored great tries in big moments for big T for for big teams but also scored a fucking shitload of tries as well yes um, all of the above yeah and they're, they're, they're the iconic you know they're i'd probably put you know Clive Sullivan in that kind of conversation as well 